What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over hard knockdowns. So the hard knockdown state is one where if the character gets knocked down on the ground, uh, either due to a throw or due to some sort of launch attack, they cannot choose to quick stand or get up by pressing the jump key or some other key. Uh, depending on the game, depending on the circumstances, a lot of times they can still roll or do some, they call like ground tech or uh, I believe wake up tech. However, really what we're just covering today is the whole fact of determining the hard knockdown state when we're in it, uh, what changes because of that. So currently, if I am to knock the character down, they will automatically get up after a given amount of time that we set up in the uh, animation and the anim BP actually should probably be changed to the character BP, but we'll get more into the cleaning that up and making that better when we get into more of the tech, as I keep referring to, like the wake up tech and things. I want to go into this stuff in depth for the combat flow, and we're gonna have, we're gonna move some things around that way our anim BP actually gets cleaner. So don't worry too much about that for now. But yeah, so we have a we have a time that is set for knockdowns. Uh, that automatically the character is forced to get up if they're down. Okay, so if I go and I launch them with the hard knockdown enabled, then no matter how much they spam the jump key, they're not standing up until the timer is up. They are forced to stay on the knockdown state, the hard knockdown state, for the given amount of time. So that's what we're going to be covering today. It's a small mechanic in terms of, you know, what it looks like and what we have to do to adjust it. However, the different things that can come from this and the way that it changes the combat can be huge depending on how you set it up and depending on what the characters can do while they're in hard knockdown, if anything. If they can still roll away, if they can do some counters sometimes. You have actually a lot of options here. And you can do this from throws as well. Only reason I'm not doing it from a throw today is because my knockdown from a throw actually doesn't have any sort of knockdown time. This is another thing we can actually cover when we get into the tech <laughs> of the attacks and the throws. That way we can get more familiar with uh, how we can set up these things. Also, it probably shouldn't be a time, again, like three seconds. It should probably be a number of frames just because we've moved pretty much everything else over. So we can cover that as well. But regardless, we are on episode 118 of the Fighting Game Tutorial Series. So if you'd like to get caught up, I'll leave this link right here in the top right corner. You can check out every episode in the series. This is the entire playlist. It also stays current, so every week when I add an episode to this playlist, you'll be able to see that too. So you can watch that and, and stay up to date. I'll also link this episode right here, which is where we first went over the knockdown, the launching and the knockdown states in general. So that's what we're going to be building off of today. So if you'd like to check it out, there it is. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get started. So this is going to be a pretty simple episode all around, but it's important that we do everything the right way the first time. That way we don't have to go back and fix this. It's, you know, nothing wrong with going back and fixing code and editing code to make it work and make it uh, more efficient or more usable. But for these states, we want to be really careful because a lot of the times they will factor into each other. Like I can only do these things from this state or these from this one. And so we have to be really careful when we're modifying things that can adjust a lot of the gameplay. So I'm going to be as, as precise as I can to make sure that this works in all circumstances we want it to without causing any issues. With that in mind, I think the best way to do this is to add a variable on the hitbox actor in the code. So our hitbox, we have our F hitbox data, which has all of our variables. And at the very bottom, I actually put it above should attach just because I thought it fit better there. Uh, right here, I have should cause hard knockdown. And the comma is should this hitbox, uh, should this hitbox be able to send the opponent into the hard knockdown state? And Basically, what I'm saying here is we can have attacks that launch our player or launch our opponent. We can have attacks that uh, trigger our opponent to go into the knockdown state and, of course, don't require a hard knockdown. So I'm putting it on the specific hitbox or at least the specific component that we can alter. So in our 
we'll get into this more in a little bit. But in our data table that has all of our moves, remember you can do things like if you're sneaky with it, you can update some of your things. They don't have to be real hitboxes. Like this backward throw isn't a real hitbox. It's just an indicator for when we want to deal damage. So instead of calling a hitbox, I can say uh, backward throw damage, right? Because it's not a th it's not a throw hitbox. This is just when the enemy hits the ground and when we want to deal damage. That's based off the animation. So remember, anytime you want to trigger damage, you can do it through this data table. That's important because that's uh, built off of this hitbox data structure. And so we want to make sure that we're adding something here that we can trigger hard knockdown on. So in the hitbox actor, make sure you have a Boolean to determine if that hitbox or that uh, moment in which damage is being dealt to the player can trigger hard knockdown. You don't have to set a default value because remember we're doing it in the structure. So you don't have to do anything in the hitbox actor.cpp. All right, then let's go into our fighter template character. There's something else I want to add today in the combo state. So we have a bunch of enums in our character. The character state is basically what the uh, this character is doing in terms of movement or uh, actions that they can be doing, such as crouching, jumping, running, uh, dashing potentially as well. And then we have the combo state, which represents what state they're in in terms of being attacked and uh, what freedoms they have from that state. So they're separate because you could have some states that overlap. So we have to be careful here. So for, for the combo state is where we have knockdown because uh, the player gets sent into the knockdown state. So the character gets launched, they hit the ground, and they're knocked down. We also want to have this hard knockdown state. I am separating them because, again, we'll be able to do different things depending on if we're in regular knockdown or hard knockdown. So simply adding a state is, I think, the best option here. So I've added this to the combo state. And then I've actually added a Boolean in here as well called should hard knockdown. Okay. Now, I know this is very similar to the hitbox actor boolean, but it's different. So, the hitbox actor is determining if that hitbox can cause hard knockdown. The character boolean here is determining if the character can be put into the hard knockdown state. There's a few reasons why this is important. Even if the hitbox is indicating that the character should go to hard knockdown, if they have a, a ways to cancel it or abilities to get out of it, then you may want to avoid sending them the hard knockdown at all, even if they were hit by that hitbox. Also, you can determine based on if they block or not if you'd like to send them the hard knockdown. Some things like throws go right through block, so you could still have a throw that sends them the hard knockdown. But alternatively, you could only cause hard knockdown on regular, um, you know, non-blocked attacks if you'd like. Again, fully up to you. But having this here allows us to set the data based off the hitbox, and we can still use it to determine if we should actually go into hard knockdown when we are to land and be put into the knockdown state. So we still want to make that... that decision when we're ready to put the character into a knockdown state. So go ahead and add a boolean. This I should actually define the constructor. That was on me for not doing that, but we should. So let's call this should hard knockdown. Set it to false. Just like that. All right, while we're in the fighter template character.h, we should actually update our take damage function as well. Take damage is where we're going to set that Boolean because that's when we get hit by the hitbox or get hit again by any sort of time. Anytime we call take damage, uh, we're going to be dealing damage to an enemy, and we want to make sure we set the, that Boolean accordingly. So if you scroll up to where our take damage function is, we have a bunch of Booleans in here, but I've added one at the end called 
uh, bool should cause hard knockdown, just like the hitbox variable is called. And I defaulted it to false. Since it is a Boolean, it's only going to be true or false. And if we plug nothing into it, like in the times where we call take damage, but we don't pass everything into it, then I'm assuming we want to default it to false. Um, you don't have to do that, but setting it to false basically means if we don't pass anything into it for this Boolean, then we'll, we'll still know that the value is false. So you can skip it a lot of times if the vast majority are not going to cause hard knockdown. Of course, when you update that, you have to update the actual function now in the CPP. So here's my take damage function. Make sure you add the Boolean should cause hard knockdown. You don't have to put the equals false here in the CPP file. As long as you define it in the header, that's perfectly fine. It'll know that it's defaulting to false, but you do still have to add the Boolean to the actual parameter list here. All right, so let's start with this. There's only one thing we have to change in here, and you can put it in a few different places depending on what you want. I'm going to do the hard knockdown on the throws and the grapples because I'm pretty sure that's standard. I've seen that a lot. But I'm also going to allow hard knockdown to occur from standard attacks that aren't throws. While the throw logic is going to be updated a bit um, to become more advanced because we need to be able to do things like cancel a throw by performing another throw within a given number of frames. So if both players perform a throw on top of each other, trying to grapple each other, they cancel. And with some things like that, it could get a little bit iffy. So I've decided to avoid any sort of uh, hard knockdown on any block attacks right now. All I'm doing is I'm causing hard knockdown. I'm setting the character should hard knockdown Boolean value to the Boolean that's coming into the function should cause hard knockdown. If the character is uh, does not block successfully. So as I said, notify the character to go into the correct knockdown state upon a successful hit, which is an unsuccessful block. Okay. So if they were hit, if this character was hit, we want to set the, it. we should determine if they go into regular knockdown or hard knockdown based off the boolean that's passed into the take damage function. That's all I'm doing for this right now. It's incredibly simple, but this will do it for all of your attacks except for attacks that get blocked by the character. You may have exceptions to the rule. If you do, simply put it in the block logic as well. Or better yet, just skip the if statement with the blocking and just put it in here, right in this parenthesis set right here, where it's just checking to make sure they're not in the super combo state. If they're not in the super combo state, then you can just set this Boolean regardless if they block or not. Again, there's a lot of customization, so I'm not too worried about it. Just do what you feel is right. This is what I think is the best for now. And we'll, of course, be able to add an update to it in the future very easily. So what this does is, assuming this Boolean that gets passed in the function is valid, we'll be able to set should hard knockdown to true, meaning that we can say the character should go into the hard knockdown state instead of the knockdown state when they are to be knocked down. We determine when a character is knocked down in the landed function right here. And what we do is we say if they are in the launched combo state, then we can set them to be knocked down. So basically, if we launch them into the air and they hit the ground, or they're in the wall bounce or ground bounce state and they hit the ground, then we want them to go into the knockdown state. I think that's valid, and I think that's still accurate. Might not always be the case. Again, there's so many things we can do, different texts and different moves that can escape out of it. But for everything we have now, this is perfect. So we want to make sure that our logic is set completely correct for all our cases here. So if the character is launched and they shouldn't ground bounce, I agree. We should go into knockdown or hard knockdown. If they came from a wall bounce and they land on the ground, yep, knockdown or hard knockdown. If they came from a ground bounce, knockdown or hard knockdown, because we don't want them to continuously bounce forever. If they get launched from a ground bounce, that's different, and it'll repeat the same steps. So all these cases, I agree, should go into knockdown or hard knockdown. The only thing that's separating it now is this Boolean, should hard knockdown. That's what's going to determine if we should go into the regular, where we can quick stand, or the hard knockdown, where they have to wait. 
So previously in this function, we just had this right here. This was right below the gravity scale modifier and above the resetting the jump count. But now I've made this into an if else statement where we check this and say if not should hard knock down, then go into the regular knockdown. Else, if we should hard knock down, then go into the hard knock down. It's literally that simple. Make sure you also reset should hard knock down, set it back to false once we reach that state because we don't want the next attack to then trigger hard knock down on the player again. We have to reset it at some point. Now, just a quick refresher while we're, while we're here in the jump function, we have the ability to quick stand or to stand up when pressing, if we press jump and we are in the knockdown state here, we enter recovery. I've added an additional comment here. The character is knocked down, stand up, quick stand. Notice how I don't check to see if the combo stays hard knockdown here because we don't want to do that. If they're hard knocked down, they can't enter recovery by pressing the jump input while they're knocked down. Okay, so the, you don't have to adjust that at all. That's already there in the jump function, but I just want to show you that. I think that's very important that you understand the difference. At this point, we can go into our engine and take a look at a few things. All right, so first things first, let's go into our mutant hitbox data data table if you have this. This is where we set up all of our individual hitboxes so we can set the data about them, uh, you know, their damage, their stun frames, whatever, all that good stuff. Well, um, in here, if we go to an attack that actually has, uh, that we want to trigger hard knockdown for, or at least test it on, you should now have this boolean because we added it to the hitbox actor class. With that in mind, all you should have to do is uh, go to, again, the hitbox that's going to be triggering this. So I have a strike hitbox on my medium attack that can trigger hard knockdown. And I've just enabled it. That's the first thing you'll need to be able to do to test. It's literally that simple. But then we also need to adjust a few things in our anim BP. So let's take a look at our logic right now as it is. So we have this start get up timer that triggers when the uh, character fully blends into the knockdown state and in three seconds it will force the character to get up this is what i was mentioning earlier this should probably be done in the character bp so we can customize this a little bit more as opposed to relying directly on the anim bp but for now it's fine i'm not going to change it for this episode feel free to do so if you want it is pretty simple it shouldn't be too bad but you can see that it will still do this regardless of hard knockdown or regular knockdown. It doesn't matter. Just as long as these events are getting called, we will enter the recovery state once that timer is up. So that's perfect. But what we need to do is make sure that the uh, states can still, we can still go to the knockdown animation if we're in hard knockdown. Okay. So what I mean by that is we have, you know, idle to launched and launched is when we're in the air. So for my character, the way it works is they get launched, they get put into this and they stay here until they collide with the ground. When they collide with the ground, we have a check to see if the combo state was knocked down. And if it was, We go into this right here. That's the knockdown state. For me, I'm using the same animation for both. Some games do it differently where they use separate animations for knockdown, hard knockdown. A lot of them use the same animation, but with different, uh, you know, there might be like a screen shake effect or there might be a little bit of stagger in front of it. I've seen this that way to kind of differentiate what type of knockdown it is. But that's just an animation. So you would add it, if you want separate animations, you would simply add a different state off of launched and check if the combo state was hard knocked down. And then you could uh, continue this chain. It would be the same process. However, using the same animation is also fun. The only thing we have to adjust is this, anim this uh, state machines, state transition from launch to knockdown has to also include the hard knockdown state. So we had this before, these four nodes. Now we also have to check for equal equal enum on hard knockdown. And then you just want an or boolean between these two checks. 
and drag that into the result. Once you do that, you'll be able to go from the launch to the knockdown state, regardless if it was a regular or hard knockdown. And the other state transitions don't actually require the state to be knockdown or hard knockdown, so you're good there. Now we need to take a look at our hitbox functions. That way we're making sure we pass in the correct boolean, the should hard knockdown, when the hitbox is spawned. That way that all the data is there when we check collision in the future and things like that. So let's go to our create active hitbox. You could also go to your projectile and throw hitboxes and do this as well. For now, I only need this for my strike. And again, we will cover more stuff with the throw hitbox where we will add it then. But feel free to add it now if you'd like. Projectiles could also cause hard knockdown if you'd like. But regardless, it's the same process for all of them. Essentially, on your create active hitbox function, add a new input parameter. I called it should hard knockdown and made it a boolean. It's right here. Some point in the function, in all these functions, we set the members in hitbox data and we pass in the data from the uh, hitbox data structure here. So now that hitbox data has this should cause hard knockdown, make sure you enable it as a pin if it's not there by default. For me, it was. But if you don't see it and you know that you've added it to the code class, just click on the set members and make sure it's as pin. Once you can see it here, it'll be empty by default. You'll want to pass in your parameter from your create active hitbox. Just like that. Now I made it fancy with reroute nodes, so I'm not going to overwrite it, but uh, it just basically comes down here and gets passed in here. Now, I actually attached the wrong uh, Boolean <laughs> here toward the end for the attaching, so let me fix that up real quick. It's not important, but if you saw that I accidentally had the wrong boolean put in here, this is for the attaching logic for hitboxes that move with the character. So make sure you don't make that same mistake I did. Okay. And this is all you have to do to set the members, but make sure that you pass it into this function call when we call create active hitbox. So for us, we call it in all of our strike hitboxes when we spawn them. Um, you know, you can see it here and everything. You should probably do it in all cases just to be safe. But you don't have to. The main one, you ha the ones you have to do it for sure are the ones where there are going to be the ability for hard knockdown to occur. So when this Boolean is true from the data table, you want to make sure that gets passed in. Again, I just pass them all in because it doesn't hurt. Like, here are some of my older ones from before I had this Boolean. It's literally that simple. You just drag it in and it works. So here's my medium strike attack. I have my data table with the row that I want. I pass in all my data into the create active hitbox function and it sets it on that hitbox. Now we have to make sure that this also gets passed into the take damage function. So you have to go into your hitbox actor BP. We have check collision that we've worked on many, many times. And we have this right here, which is our hitbox data uh, it's like the split hitbox data and we were using that to pass in all sorts of stuff to take damage to check the type that it was Well, it's really this simple But uh, what we want to do now is we want to make sure that these should cause hard knockdown is being filled out in these two spots where we call it take damage Again for the projectiles you could do it as well because it is down here In fact, I'll just do it now even though we're not using projectiles because why not? So in all your take damage calls where you care about should cause hard knockdown, make sure that you're passing in the Boolean. In the check collision function like I have, this now has should cause hard knockdown on this node. So I have a reroute node that goes into take damage on the bottom and take damage on the top. What you saw down below was my projectile logic with take damage. So if the player is hit by a projectile, and I just passed in the hitbox data for should cause hard knockdown to each of these functions as well. So now the way this works, if we look at it one final time in full, we go from the animation blueprint. This animation starts, which triggers this anim notify, grabs the data from our data table, 
calls create active hitbox to spawn a hitbox and set the parameters. If a collision occurs, takes the should cause hard knockdown as well as the other parameters, goes into the code, sets our data correctly and take damage. Say, yep, we can cause hard knockdown. Then uh, the character will be launched at that point or in some state where they can land. When they do, they're going to go into the hard knockdown state because this if statement right here is going to succeed. Well, actually, it's going to fail and go to the else, which is going to put it here in the hard knockdown. And then once the character is in the hard knockdown state, they won't be able to quick stand because of our logic and jump. And their animation blueprint will allow them to go into the knockdown state. One final quick note before we wrap up. Yes, we're doing this in landed right now because this comes from launches and bounces. Again, when we do the throw episode, you don't necessarily have to throw the opponent. Um, like ours is actually a, a controlled throw where it's a grapple and it plays an animation. The enemy takes damage at the end. A lot of the grapples and throws are like this. Because of that, you'll never go into the launch state. So you won't ever be able to hit this logic and you won't be able to go into the knockdown. That's okay. I have the perfect idea on how to adjust that so that this works in other places as well. Just be different from the landed logic because it's more specific to throws and other types like that. But anyway, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. That's more for myself and the channel than anything else you can do. Just really helps me to get that support from you guys, and I really appreciate it. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon members and supporters and subscribers. Thank you guys so much for everything, for all the love, for all the extra support, and for just going out of the way to help me. I really appreciate it, and I'm very, very excited uh, as we pump out every episode here, how it gets better and better each time. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. I'll be happy to help you out, and it's completely free. You don't have to worry about anything at all. Like I said, guys, that's all I got, so thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.